Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just Two Acres Farm and welcome to another edition of Small Farm Sunday. Today I got a special surprise to show you guys. Redheader piglets yesterday. What are you doing little guy? And wouldn't you know it, it happened while I was at Farmer's Market. Hillary texted me at about 11 in the morning and said, oh, she's starting to have her piglets. And she was done by about three in the afternoon. She has 11 here, which is far short of my original estimate of 20 or more, but it's still a good litter. Red normally has litters of 13, 14 piglets. 11's good, they're all healthy, none were born dead. They're all up and around, doing well, so I'm happy. Hey little guys. One of the reasons that I think that Red is a good mom is that her piglets are always right up and at them. They're not sluggish when they're born. They get right up and they move around. We don't have any problems with having to, you know, kind of stimulate them to get them going. Red's had litters at night and we've gotten up the next day and there are all the pigs. She's just a great mom. She rarely lays on them. Sometimes we have problems with moms like Missy, our pig that we butchered last year, stepping on pigs, laying on pigs. Red rarely, rarely will step on a piglet. Just some quick facts about pig gestation. Pig pregnancy is easy to remember. Three months, three weeks, and three days from breeding. And when pigs have their piglets, it can be a long process as they pop one out at a time. Like I said, it took Red about four hours. And the way that you know they're done is they'll actually pass two sets of afterbirth because their uterus has two horns in it, a left and a right side. Piglets gestate in both horns. So we saw afterbirth pass at about three o'clock yesterday and then she actually had one more piglet and then passed the second afterbirth. It's not uncommon for gaps to happen time-wise between piglets of a half hour or sometimes more. We used to freak out about that. We called the vets a few times and they came. But you have these gaps. Sometimes piglets will pop out one right after the other. Sometimes you wait a half an hour or more. You don't know whether they're done or not until you see both sets of afterbirth come out. Our process for farrowing sows is just what you see. Sometimes we put some wood chips on the floor, wood shavings like you see now. I think it helps to keep things dry for the piglets. Sometimes we do it on bare concrete. We have tried putting hay in the pen and ran into all kinds of problems at farrowing time. Yes, mama pig will draw it up into a kind of big nest when it's hay, but Piglets can get lost in hay that's, you know, this thick or more. And then mom can't find them, winds up stepping on them. They don't navigate very well when they're first born. So we've found that wood shavings make an easy surface to both absorb moisture, provide a little bit of a cushion, and to be something that the piglets can get around in without getting stuck. We keep our pig breeding stock, our two sows and our boar, inside a barn here in pens. And I think this works a lot better than trying to farrow on pasture because it's easy to control breeding. So Red's got her pen here, Brownie's got her pen next door, and then John the boar is across. And we try to breed at the same time every year. Our pigs get bred twice a year. They get bred for birth in usually late April or early May. Um, here we are in late May because we have later butcher dates. Our butcher was booked until December. And we breed, we control the breeding by bringing in the boar at the right time so that they farrow at the right time so that our piglets are born during warm weather. So we have an April, May farrowing, and then we have another farrowing in the fall, usually in around October when it's still fairly warm. We've had awful problems with trying to farrow piglets in the wintertime. This is an unheated barn. Piglets are really susceptible to the cold and you can use heat lamps and things like that and build a low side to the pen, but we found it's a lot easier to just farrow them when, they're, when it's warm out and not have to deal with all that worry about the cold. Many people use farrowing crates and that's a crate that holds the mom um, and has a gap under it so that the piglets can escape from the mom. Usually you put heat outside the farrowing crate so the piglets want to stay in the heat when they're not eating off of mom. And it can help with mom stepping on piglets to a certain extent, it doesn't eliminate it entirely. We've never used farrowing crates. We tend to choose for good moms like 
uh, red here rather than using a farrowing crate, but certainly it's, some, it's a way you can go. And of course, once in a while, they got to go up and meet mom, you know. Our pens here in the barn have a door and it's closed right now because we don't want the sow to go outside when she's got young piglets. It's just more of a chance of the piglets getting lost, getting out of the fence. But we do open these up in the summer when it's dry and hot outside so that the mama pigs and the boar can go outside. Of course, they're still separate so we can control breeding and roll around in the mud, make a wallow, etc. We tend to leave them closed during the winter just because snow gets in here and there's nothing to forage for outside. What are you doing? So what happens next with these little guys? Well, it's a process. In about two weeks or so, when they're strong on their feet and they're starting to really thrive, we'll castrate the males. And Hillary and I do that. It's a very simple process. I have a video on it if you care to see. I'd rather do it younger than older. The piglets are easy to hold when they're younger. I think with all animals, they tend to remember it less the younger that they are. And that's all we do as far as preparing the piglets. I know that some people will clip teeth, will dock tails, will give them iron shots. We've never done any of that and never had a problem with anything that would result from giving those treatments. I think it's just more stress on the piglet, so we don't do that. Once in a while, I will give mom a shot of ivermectin if I remember it. Um, to control roundworm is our main parasite problem here. If you give ivermectin about a week before mom farrows, that protection will transfer to the piglets, so they'll be parasite free for a little while. My general feeling on pig parasites is they're really difficult to control. Once you have roundworm on your property, the eggs can be dormant in the soil, I think for 20 or 30 years and be viable if the, the pig goes rooting around and picks them up. So once you have it on your farm, it's really difficult to get rid of. Instead of giving dewormers, we've opted to grow stock or select stock that do well with a parasite load. So we've just accepted roundworm in our case to be something that we live with. And over the years, we've developed stock that do well under that parasite load. The piglets do this to get mom to lower her milk. They'll nudge around the udder and then suck on the teat. It's amazing how fast that piglets can grow and be weaned from their mom. With cattle, you're talking about four to six months for weaning calves. With piglets, you can wean them in as little as two weeks. We don't do that. We wean in four to six weeks after birth and weaning is a gradual process so by weaning I mean taking them off mother's milk. In a couple weeks we'll start putting grain on the floor of the pen and piglets are naturally curious they'll start eating the grain realize they like it and so their diet gradually changes over from milk to grain and at six weeks when we separate them from their mom they're completely on grain. <laughs> Full belly and they just concrete out. That one got sat on. It sure is a rough life for mom when the piglets are just born. These guys will nurse almost continuously. And I don't think that Red gets hardly any sleep for the first week or so. Sometimes she'll do the stores closed position. What do we call the stores closed position? She'll roll over onto her belly and stores closed. Piglets aren't nursing then. Hey, hey little one. Mom won't eat anything either for the first two or three days. I think her insides are rearranging themselves now that the piglets are gone. She will get up and drink, but no feed. I found they won't, they just won't eat for two or three days. Hey, Red. She's got to be tired. She is a great mom, though. I couldn't ask for anything better. She's always been a good mom, haven't you, Red? I guess we're lucky. I've heard horror stories of moms eating their piglets, of moms being really protective of their piglets, not letting you in. We've never had any of those problems. Red, I can walk in and handle her piglets and pet her, and she's not protective at all. I guess it's nice to have that trust. Since this is a summer batch of pigs, after the piglets are weaned, in about six weeks, they'll go into this lot right here.
and they have tons of yummy things to eat in this lot. For fencing in our summer lots, we just use a two wire fence. You can barely see it here. It's been three years since we run pigs in here. Uh, wire it about 20 inches or so and then one below it and if it's nice and hot the pig will gradually come up to it get zapped and then they learn where the fence is and we don't have much of a problem at all with pigs getting out we have three pig pastures like this so we rotate them so they get about a three-year rest each and I think that one of the important things is to give pigs plenty of shade in the summertime they don't like the heat so we always put them in what we call forest edge lots which are partly treed and then have some open land next to them so the pigs can go in and out of that environment and we also give them a place where they can wallow when it gets hot in the summertime a muddy hole that's how pigs cool themselves off because unlike me pigs don't sweat well, it won't be long before I'm telling these guys to run, run, run. And Brownie's going to have her piglets. Hopefully it's her first litter in about three weeks or so. You know, there's all kinds of different ways to raise piglets and pigs. And this is just the way that we do it. There are certainly other good ways to do it. Since this is Small Farm Sunday, I welcome any questions you have about raising pigs. Mm, I love piglets. Who doesn't love piglets? I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.